Bono Unity. In Class 1A, the Lexington Minutemen home versus the Commandos. There's a good matchup, Commandos and Minutemen. DMAC is at Arcola. The winners of those games will play each other. Moving on, Shinoa's back in the playoffs. They're at Poplar Grove North Boone. The Jacksonville School of the Deaf will take on El Paso. El Paso seated number two in Class 1A. Look at this matchup. Princeville will be at Star County. Princeville won at Star County earlier this year. The two rivals meet in the playoffs. Albion is at Lewistown. For the record in 5A, Canton. Well, there's a phone number if you have any questions. 698-1950. 698-1950. If you have any questions about the playoffs, give us a ring. I want to mention in 4A, Canton got the number 5 seed. Manuel, the number 6 seed. Metamora, the number 7 seed. Give us a call if you need some more information. Back to you. Well, rewind playoff style. Now you can be a part of the Miss America program with Miss Heart of Illinois, a scholarship program for achieving young women. You win, you advance in the state playoffs. The trick, if you lose, you're done for the season. Hello, Heart of Illinois, and welcome to Football Rewind Playoff Style. We're going to have Rewind for you tonight and again tomorrow night. So we're going to concentrate on all the football playoff games in round one. Tonight we feature four games. We'll begin in Class 4A. Pontiac is the smallest team in Class 4A. They just missed going 3A, but rather than be disappointed about that, Pontiac fired up about the 4A challenge. Let's check out the Indians' playoff debut tonight. Pontiac's captains meeting the Salem captains at midfield before the game. Pontiac's relied on big plays all season, but the first big play in this game, a mistake. Pontiac's pass by Jake Fry, intercepted by Adrian Kohler. The Wildcats of Salem then go to work. Kohler the bomb to Casey Newell. That set up a field goal, and uh, Salem had a quick three-zip lead, but not for long. Here come the Indians. The ensuing kickoff, Jeremy Sturzik grabs the ball, takes off down the sideline, 46 yards. Big play by Jeremy. That set up Pontiac in front of a big crowd's first scoring drive. Tristan Davis, the beautiful run right here, takes it all the way down to the 11-yard line. Davis had over 100 yards on just 16 carries. Then it's Jeremy Sturzik, three yards out into the end zone. The route was on. Pontiac led 7-3. Next possession, watch right here, the fake handoff by Fry. He keeps it and goes nine yards. Nifty play action fake right there. Fry, the nine-yard gain. That drive stalled. But Joel Dotson, what a great all-around player. Lineman, linebacker, kicker, punter. Beautiful punt. Down inside the five by Sturzik right there for Pontiac. Pontiac's Mick Peterson, known for their offense, but they've always been a hard-hitting defensive bunch as well. They stuff the run right here. Two plays later, they stuff the option to the point where Tommy Hens, number 23, gets the safety. Yeah, put your arms together, folks. That's a safety. It's now 9-3 to three, Pontiac. McPeterson pretty fired up about that. Gives Hens a big congratulatory hug. you got to love the defensive effort by Pontiac. After that opening drive, they allowed nothing. Pontiac gets the ball back. Fry to Davis in the 20-yard gain. Then Fry to sophomore Santos Gonzalez. This is a third down, a big first down picked up by Gonzalez. He's come through with more and more big plays as the season's gone on. That sets up Jeremy Sturzik scoring from two yards out for the touchdown. The two-point conversion is going to go Fry to Kevin Watson. It's now 17-3, Pontiac. The Indians, like I said, after that opening drive by Salem, that one big pass play, that's all Salem got. Here, Hints again, the defensive stop, getting some help from Dodson. Then on fourth down, Salem's going to fake the punt, but Ryan Staler not faked. Staler stays at home. Number 99 comes up with the flying tackle. Then on the blitz, Jake Campbell, the quarterback. Sack, you get the idea. Pontiac's defense dominating. Salem hit on that big pass early in the game. They tried a few more big passes, but uh, to no avail. Here their bomb will fall incomplete, and Pontiac bombs Salem. Pontiac plays the winner of tomorrow's Manuel Bethalto game. It's all Pontiac tonight. While Pontiac, a perennial playoff team, Normal West tonight makes their first ever playoff appearance. Congratulations to Coach Jim Baker and the Wildcats tonight. Normal West at Rochelle. Those wild Wildcat fans made the road trip to Rochelle, and they had to like early on. Normal West, first time with the ball. Brad Baker to T.J. Riddle. Beautiful catch by T.J. 
Then it's Baker going up the middle for big yardage. Brad Baker played a great game. He may have been the best player on the field. He fights here for extra yards versus the undefeated Rochelle team. Yeah, Baker liked that play. He'll try it again. Baker up the middle for five more. You know, this is Normal West's fourth year of varsity football. Brad Baker's been the quarterback for all four years. Started as a freshman, sophomore, junior, and now as a senior, he's become a dominant player. Here he pitches outside to Matt Feasley. Feasley, the great cutback move, brilliant play. All these seniors on Normal West deserve the utmost congratulations. They have come a long way in four years. Later, Matt Feasley gains five more. Now fourth down. Normal West going to go for it as they stretch out the chains. It's fourth and inches. And Baker's simply going to take it right behind the big center, get the first down right there for Normal West. Next play, Baker's going to take it right behind the center, right into the end zone. In fact, let's give you that big center's name. That's big Austin Feger leading the block, and he's a senior as well. Baker's dancing in the end zone. We'll give that offensive line a lot of the credit. Seven zip, or actually six zip, Normal West. They get the ball again. Here they come again. Baker picks up seven yards on the option. Then to pitch to Feasley. Look at Feasley. Beautiful move. A little shake and bake by Matt. Then uses that speed to pick up good yards. Great run by Feasley. That led to this touchdown run by Matt Feasley. He waltzes into the end zone. Normal West leads 12 to nothing over undefeated Rochelle. Then on the two-point conversion, Feasley dives. 14 nothing Normal West. Would you believe 14 zip West. The West Cats fans, the only ones cheering. But Rochelle... Well, here Feasley comes in to make the tackle on defense, but after a slow start, Rochelle scored on five straight possessions. Kyle Kissick to Kyle Zick for the touchdown here. Normal West put a scare into 9-0 Rochelle, but Rochelle's now 10-0. They win 35-14. It's a Class 1A where we have a pair, two Heart of Illinois matchups, all Heart of Illinois matchups up in Stark County. It's the Rebels hosting their big rival, the Princeville Princes. Now when Stark County and Princeville get together, you figure it's going to be a hard-hitting running battle. It was certainly a hard-hitting battle. You probably figured a low-scoring battle early on. Princeville took the lead, Drew Kitterman. The 40-yard field goal. Three zip with three minutes to go in the first half. The Princess fans going crazy. But Stark County comes back, DJ DeWolf, the nice run here. But the key in the game, not the running, but the passing. The passing of Chad Van Develde. Here he hooks up with Noah Four Lines, the beautiful gain right here. Down three zip, that was a big play for Stark County. Noah Four Lines, the catch, Van Develde the pass. The fans, the milk jugs. We're in the second quarter now, early in the second quarter. Same drive, Jake Street Matter fighting hard, gets the first down, takes it down close to the goal line. It's not a touchdown, but as quarterback Chad Van Develde turns into referee, it is a first down. From there, Van Develde will follow the offensive line right into the end zone. Touchdown. It was 7-3 to three Star County. Actually, they missed the extra point. It was 6-3 to three Star County. Then on defense, watch this play. Steve Musselman strips the ball. Noah four lines recovers. We'll show it to you again. Nice hit by Musselman. He played a great game. He was the center on offense, too, leading those touchdown runs. Here he comes up with a big hit on defense. First down, Star County momentum on Star County's side. Princeville, though, came up with some nice defense of their own. Steve Turner, the great play right there by Turner. Terrific tackle for a loss. But while Princeville stopped the run, Stark County turned to the pass. Van Develde to James Nolan, a thing of beauty. 34 yards for the touchdown. A beautiful toss by Van Develde. As Stark County cheers, they're now going to go for two. 12 to 3 at this point. Watch Van Develde. He's going to fake it and then follow his fullback right into the end zone. It's now 14 to three. Van Develde's doing it all. He was refereeing, he's running, he's passing, he's cheerleading. He put on a show. He'll probably be up for our Athlete of the Week after this performance. Brian Kinnikin, the Princeville coach, tried a few new things, a little shotgun offense here, Joe Arnett, but eee, it's not the way you want the shotgun to work. Had a bad feeling for poor uh, Princeville when this happened. Third down, they try the quick kick. Gabe Barta blocks the quick kick. If you thought that was bad for Princeville while their punt's blocked, check out the punt by Cole Brees of Star County. Beautiful punt, and Danny Street Matter hustles down there to down it at the one. Great play by Street Matter. Great punt by Cole Brees. Everything going Star County's way. They started this quarter trailing three zip. They would score three touchdowns in the quarter. Hey, Chad Van Develde playing some defense, too. Breaks up the pass right here. Then on the final play of the first half, 
final play of the first half. Three seconds ago in the half when this play started, it's the pass from Van Develde to DJ DeWolf, the final play of the half. Wow. It's now 20 to 3 at halftime. Here's what Coach Johnson told his boys at halftime. Yeah, relentless. Keep it up. Would they? Well, we'll see. Opening kickoff or actually a punt here, but watch the special teams play by DJ DeWolf. Beautiful open field tackle by DJ. But Princeton got a nice drive going, a time-consuming drive, which probably didn't help, but a great drive. 19 plays, 78 yards. Joe Arnett the run. There's Van Develde cheerleading. <laughs> then it's Joe Arnett the touchdown, capping off a 19-play, 78-yard touchdown drive. Those Princeville fans, now ah, we love Princeville, and those Princeville fans love WHOI. But Princeville thought they were back in the game at 20 to 10, but here comes Star County running the ball. Carlos Ortiz, the beautiful runoff tackle. Then it's Chad Van Develde. He would not go down. Beautiful play right here by Van Develde. Goes all the way into the end zone. We'll let him dance quite a bit because he deserves to dance after that one. Touchdown, Van Develde. That really was kind of the clinching touchdown. Put Stark County back on top, 27 to 10. Princeville would get a beautiful touchdown pass from Eric McNeely to Jason Sturr, but it's not enough. Stark County ends Princeville's great season. Congratulations to the Princes on a great season. Stark County marches on. Out in Lexington tonight, the Minutemen out of the Mid-State Conference hosting the Commandos, Abingdon out of the Prairie Land. Pretty good matchup, Minutemen and Commandos. Stay in your lane. Set tempo right off the bat. Kick team, set tempo right off the bat. Three and out Let's now. Let's go. 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 Three and out. Three and out. Forcing the foot to ball the ball in Let's get off to a good start. Team on three. One, two, three. Team! Well, Coach Tanny got them all fired up, but on the opening kickoff, actually a nice return by Abingdon's Josh Stone King. Stone King with a nice return, but then here come the Minutemen on defense. Adam Miller, Marty Fiaco, all the Minutemen in on the tackle right here. Some great D forcing the punt, and then Lexington takes over. Nate Miller completes the pass to Justin Ordle for a good game. Then it's Miller to Ordle again. Boy, if you throw it close, Justin Ordle's going to make the catch. Great grab right there by Ordle getting his hands underneath the ball. Then it's Miller to Casey Kettleson. Kettleson had a huge night for the Minutemen. Sets up the touchdown on the quarterback sneak. Nate Miller's not going to be denied with everyone blocking. Miller's fighting. Miller's in. 7-zip. Lexington. But Abingdon comes back. First half was a real struggle between the two teams. Justin Fox runs hard here. Then a beautiful touchdown early in the second quarter now. 7-zip Lexington when Jeff Mannon hits Travis Thomas for the touchdown. Abingdon, nice run after the catch by Thomas. It's 7-6 to six at this point. But boy, after that, Lexington took over in the second quarter. Nate Miller here will pass to Phillip Brown as the Minutemen back on the attack. Nate Miller, their senior quarterback. We told you the story of Brad Baker. Nate Miller, same story. He's been a four-year starting quarterback. Nice pass right there to Phillip Brown. Then Miller rolls out and keeps on rolling. Look at the play action. Fooled a lot of the commandos. Miller takes it into the end zone. Touchdown. The Minutemen are up now 14-6. Then it's the defense's turn. Chris Patterson for Abingdon running with the ball, but Robert Cleethorms strips the ball. Justin Ordle recovers. Nice play right there by Robert and Justin. Lexington's got the ball. Very next play. Lexington's in the end zone. Nate Miller to Casey Kettleson, the play of the night. Kettleson catches. Kettleson spins. Kettleson scores. Wow, he's in the end zone. That's a touchdown. Casey Kettleson before the fumble. Great play from Miller to Kettleson. The fans going wild. Later, Lexington rolling again. They would score three touchdowns in the second quarter. Here it's Nate Miller to Phillip Brown again. Phillip had a good game. He's making the highlights a lot tonight. But the guy who starred tonight was Casey Kettleson. Gets a nice block and right there, number 65 with a nice block. And Kettleson takes it into the end zone for the touchdown. Abingdon's defense comes up with a play here late in the first half when Jason Riney will intercept a pass. But that's about all that went wrong for the Lexington offense. They played great in this game. 
Ryan the nice pick right there, a nice play right there as he anticipated, and Jason comes up with the interception. But second half, here come the Minutemen again. Wes Sedgwick running right up the middle for a nice gain right there. Then it's going to be Nate Miller on the screen pass to Casey Kettleson. This one's going for 50 yards. This one's going the distance. And Lexington, Coach Don Tanney and the boys are going into the second round. I've been so impressed by Coach Tanney and the Minutemen all year. What a job they've done. Give a lot of credit to that offensive line. They're the ones making the playmakers make plays. Lexington wins 35-13. we got to get out to Minutemen practice this week and talk to those boys in purple. That wraps up a Friday night of playoff action. Tomorrow we have a dozen games for you. We're going to have our HOI cameras at all 12 games. And tomorrow night at 1235, a little bit earlier tomorrow, tomorrow at 1235, it'll be Football Rewind Saturday. We'll be checking out that Notre Dame-Morton game, of course, the Metamora game, the Washington game, the Canton game, Normal Communities game over at Geneseo, all the Mid-State Conference teams in the playoffs, all the highlights, Bloomington, all the highlights tomorrow on Football Rewind, 1235 tomorrow. Right now, we wrap up Friday night by rewinding the best plays of this Friday night in the playoffs. Here's WOW. <laughs> the dust in Metamora. The Redbirds beat Jerseyville today, 27 to 20, advancing to the 4A quarterfinals of the state football playoffs. The Redbirds already making tackles before the game even started. Wait, guys. Then in their opening series, Brad DeMoss to Jeremy Dykes, 30 yards. And then with roughly two minutes and a half, it's offense by David Copperfield. A trick play, the flea flicker. It's Dykes again, this time for 64 yards, left alone like a guy with germs. Metamora led 14-0 at halftime, and they won it 27-20. And next Saturday, plays at unbeaten Rochelle. Canton hosting Midlothian Bremen today. The hot chocolate concession doing a brisk business, as did the Little Giants' Pete Holak. Six seconds in the half. And slush, so we haven't where he still worked. Seven Canton. Second half, and it strode to Holak again, this time for 52 yards. Holak scored five touchdowns, and Canton's in the quarterfinals for the first time ever, 40 to 21. Elsewhere in 4A, Notre Dame season ends with a 34-11 loss at Kankakee McNamara. And in 5A, Bloomington takes it on the chin, 37-14 from Chicago Mount Carmel. El Paso and North Boone playing, and seeing is believing. Fourth quarter, Comets down 7-6, and North Boone's Kevin Lucian, who's apparently never heard the phrase shortest distance between two points. He goes about 50 yards to gain 11, 14-6 Vikings. Later, El Paso driving toward the potential tying score. Yeah. Don Razum intercepts, and then he enters the state cross-country meet, and El Paso suffers its only loss of the season, 20-6. Stark County at Monmouth Warren. 25. Rebels down 7-0 at halftime and facing a rebellion. It's Jamie Martin to Troy Bennett. And Warren shuts out Stark County. Your final 21 to nothing. Lexington and Arcola, the Minutemen operating like clockwork. Watch this. Nate Miller, the quarterback, on the pass. And it's Casey Kettleson on the payoff end of the hook and ladder play. And the Minutemen win 24-13. They advance against North Boone. And as coincidence would have it, that's the team that knocked Lexington out of the playoffs last year. Also in Class A, Lewiston lost. 600. Their future. If an ex-professional end table 
and the lamp for only $698. We have a dozen of You've only $698. You're sure to find one you'll like at Sherman's We Are Boo. With Jerry Warfield. Hello, Heart of Illinois. Normal U High and Peoria Notre Dame both wrapping up great soccer seasons today. It was all Heart of Illinois matchup at the state soccer. We live Normal U High. Pioneers score first. Alex Querco serves the ball up to Jonathan Williamson for the beautiful sliding goal. It was one zip. U High at halftime. Second half, Chase Hildenbrink passes ahead to Williamson. He gets the empty net goal, and U High wins it two zip. They take home a third place trophy. We had a great four years. We've been together for a long time, and it's going to be hard to break apart. We just had a great season. Congratulations to both Notre Dame and Normal U High. To the football playoffs, and it's a big day for the middle line. I first met a Mora winner today. Our windows and for his career. Full of uh, pretty highlights for the Redbirds right here. Brad DeMoss. Go into the air. The 30-yard touchdown pass to Jeremy Dykes. A little later on, a little razzle-dazzle on the reverse. Sophomore quarterback Joe Stam connects with Dykes for another Redbird TD. Later on, this is more like Redbird football. Running the ball, the one-yard touchdown plunge by Jake Albert. 27-20, the Redbirds advance to the quarterfinals. Well, they'll meet undefeated Rochelle. At Canton, the Little Giants taking on Bremen. Notre Dame and U-High both won yesterday, and for the first Five touchdowns. Andy Strode to Holak for the TD. Later on, Holak, the 52-yard touchdown run. He had over 250 total yards today. 41-21. Canton advances to the quarterfinals. While ND soccer down south, the Notre Dame football team up north at Bishop McNamara. ND quarterback Ryan Gilfillan with the keeper. He picks up an Irish first down. But Bishop Mack running over ND. Vince Singleton, the touchdown, 34-11. ND's great season. Comes to an end. Also up north, Bloomington playing Chicago Mount Carmel. The Purple Raiders had a bunch of great highlights. Clint Soper with the long run down the far sideline. Later on, quarterback Barry DeBoard with the TD toss to Jeff Engel, but number one Mount Carmel too much. 37-14 the final. In class 1A, the El Paso County. Bremen this afternoon. It's an outstanding defense right here. The big hit and big stop by JT Jones. Meanwhile, El Paso gets on the board. The pretty touchdown pass Scott Reed to Ryan Unsicker. But that's El Paso's only points of the game. 20 to 6, North Boone over El Paso. Lexington at Arcola today. Minutemen quarterback Nate Miller connects with Phillip Brown rolling out right here. And Brown turns it into the long scoring play. Later on, Robbie Cavallo, the short touchdown run, a huge win on the road for the Minutemen. They beat Arcola 24-13. The Stark County Rebels at under... But North Boone exploded for 20 points in the second half. Keith Lucian around left end, scores from 16 yards out. North Boone wins 20-6. Could Lexington win at Arcola and move into round three? You bet. Minutemen using a little trick play. This is Nate Miller hitting Justin Ordle, who then pitches to Casey Kettleson. It's called the hook and ladder. It's called a Lexington 24-13 win in the first round, or the second round of the playoffs in Class 1A. Here's your other scores. Bad news here. Warren eliminates Stark County. Carthage eliminates Lewistown. Notre Dame loses today at Kankakee Bishop McNamara. And Bloomington loses at Chicago Mount Carmel. College football for a surprise or two. Lexington is not your typical hard-hitting, straightforward, no-nonsense Class 1A football team. The Minutemen are having too much fun being flashy and unpredictable on offense for that. You know, it's like saving all your life for a, a new car, and, uh, and then once you get the car, you're afraid to drive it because you might scratch it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, whatever we have in our arsenal, we're going to use it. While most teams are paring down their offenses once they get into the playoffs, Lexington isn't. The Minutemen know they've got several key playmakers on their roster who aren't afraid to execute plays that other teams might consider risky. Case in point, Saturday at Arcola, Nate Miller passes to Justin Ordle, who then laterals to Casey Kettleson. The trick play works to perfection as the Minutemen score, and Arcola is stunned. Makes us a little more excited, 
as a play, I mean, because we know we have the opportunity to score on that play when we got such good playmakers. It makes me feel good that I'm part of that, and I'm just glad to be part of this football team altogether in the tradition in Lexington. Uh, we're a team that's pretty balanced offensively. We do a lot of things. we got some kids that are playmakers. We get the ball in our hands, and some positive things can happen. With only eight Class 1A teams left playing football in the state, Lexington is glad to be the nonconformist. The Minutemen just want to be the only team left standing after the game tomorrow. Good luck to the Minutemen tomorrow, and good luck to the two Mid-Illini teams hitting the road for the playoffs. Uh, you know, being planned this time. Oh, but history didn't repeat itself. Nate Miller to Casey Kettleson. Miller threw more bombs today than a master sergeant. This time he hooks up with Justin Ordle. 13-zip Lexington. It was 28-7 at halftime. Miller, he's won again to Kettleson. And Lexington's going to the semifinals after a 38-19 victory. They'll host Sterling Newman next Saturday. Our center and the receivers made great plays, and we got fortunate enough to get a couple turnovers, and momentum was in our favor pretty much the whole game. Now, 542 teams start the season. Right now, there's 24 left playing, and we're one of them. Congratulations. <laughs> And they're the last. Justin Dentino, it was 14 8, but Rochelle quarterback Kyle Kissick had a huge game. Here he takes it himself for the touchdown. The Hubs had a 30. And it starts around. Rally, Jake Maurer, the long touchdown run right there. Then it's DeMoss hooking up with Jeremy Dykes for another touchdown. Metamora got within 36 30, but the rally ends there. 36 30, Rochelle. In Class 1A football, Lexington, our final Heart of Illinois team. Today, the Minutemen hosting North Boone, the team that eliminated them last season. Lexington's offense, impressive. Nate Miller to Casey Kettleson for the touchdown. Miller spreading it around. He goes to Justin Order, Ordle for another score. The Minutemen doing it in the air and on the ground. Nathan Bernard up the middle for the TD. Miller had four touchdown passes today. He was the big star. Again, he hits Kettleson for six. How about one more TD? Miller to Phillip Brown right here. A convincing win for Lexington. 38-19 the final score. I'm just real proud of the way our kids executed. Our kids they got off to a great start and uh, we led by three touchdowns at halftime and uh, just did a super job. I'm real proud of it. We had some big uh, plays on defense. We got a couple turnovers and it kind of ch changed the momentum. And I mean, we got, like I said, we got playmakers and just got to get the ball in their hands. Congratulations to Lexington, 38-19. They're off to the semifinals. Remember, we'll have HOI rewind. Close in the third quarter, Vince Peters sacks Josh Jokums here for a loss. But Glenwood dominated the fourth quarter, run away with it in the final uh, minutes of the game. Ross runs it in for one of his two late scores and Glenwood eliminates Canton 31-14. The Class 1A playoffs, Lexington hosting Poplar Grove, North Boone, Nate Miller, and Justin Ordle have been a deadly combination all year long. Miller to Ordle on this nice play. Then it's a spectacular touchdown here. Miller to Ordle again. A perfect lob, a perfect catch for a perfect touchdown for the Minutemen. Lexington with a 10-point halftime lead. Senior running back Robbie Cavallo gets the call here. Nice run. He gets deep into North Boone territory before being pushed out of bounds at the 15-yard line. That would lead to the Nathan Barnard scores. He gets in. Lexington moves on, 38 to 19. Meanwhile, at the IA, right? I hear the entire town of Metamora was in Rochelle today. I bet. Somebody had to be. be. Hope somebody was babysitting. Metamora staged one of the biggest comebacks today since the crew cut, trailing Rochelle by 28 points on the road in the Class 4A quarterfinals. The Redbirds pulled within six and had the ball with less than a minute to play. The birds juiced up like a toy with brand new batteries. But Rochelle drains some of that enthusiasm here. A third and 13, and Brian Holmgren takes off like his pants are on fire. 60 yards, 14-0 Hubs, first quarter. Second quarter, the Birds answer. Brad DeMoss to Jake Maurer at a two-point conversion. It's 14-8. But two plays later, Rochelle scored. Quarterback Kyle Kissick on the keeper. Say that three times fast. 47 yards, 28-8 Rochelle at the half. Second half and the Hubs answer with 22 straight points. Kyle Zick makes everybody in a white jersey Zick. 
Another big play, 54 yards, 36-8 Rochelle. But Metamora never threw in the towel and closed the game with a 22-point run of its own. Maurer scoring here. The Redbirds got within six before losing 36-30. So that made Canton the middle line eyes last and only hope at Chatham Glenwood. The Little Giants opened. Cameron Reagan has 70 to Josh Yoakum's 7-zip. And they go double or nothing when Strode hooks up on a 27-yarder with Pete Holak. He had five touchdowns last week. But Glenwood shut him out the rest of the way. Chris Ross goes through the entire enrollment of Canton. He scored three times. And Canton's record season ends with a 31-14 loss at Glenwood. You know, we knew that 14 points wasn't going to win this game, and it wasn't a question of us sitting on a 14-point lead as much as their defensive kids really. Story, please. In Class A, Lexington hosting North Boone, the team that knocked the Minutemen out of the playoffs a year ago, but history did not repeat itself. Nate Miller to Casey Kettleson. Miller was throwing bombs like it was the 4th of July. This time, he hooks up with Justin Ortle. 13-0. It was 28-7 at halftime. Miller, he's one in Kettleson's direction again here. And Lexington's in the semifinals after a 38-19 victory. They'll host Sterling Newman next Saturday. Our seven of the receivers made great plays, and we got fortunate enough to get a couple turnovers, and momentum was in our favor pretty much the whole game. Now, 542 teams start the season. Right now, there's 24 left playing, and we're one of them. Congratulations. It was supposed to be... Johnson. Staples. Five yards against Youngstown State today. Open for in the future. The idea. Part of Illinois team left. In class 1A, the Lexington Minutemen, big winners over North Boone. The Minutemen offense impressive today. Nate Miller to Casey Kettleson for the 23-yard touchdown strike. Then Miller hooks up with Justin Ordle for the Minutemen score. Lexington doing it through the air and doing it on the ground. Fullback Nathan Bernard busts up the middle for the touchdown. But Lexington doing most of the damage with the pass. Miller to Kettleson for six more. Nate Miller had a huge game. That is Miller, the TD toss to Phillip Brown. Lexington is in the final four, 38-19, the final. I'm just real proud of the way our kids executed. Our kids I got off to a great start, and uh, we led by three touchdowns at halftime, and uh, just did a super job. I'm real proud of it. We had some big uh, plays on defense. We got a couple turnovers, and it kind of ch changed the momentum. And I mean, we got, like I said, we got playmakers, and just got to get the ball in their hands. Lexington will play Sterling Newman next week in the state semifinals in Class 4. For being ejected. Show. The news isn't any better for Canton, which went to unbeaten Chatham Glade up North Boone. The Minutemen have so many weapons on offense. Nate Miller and Justin Ordle are two of them. There's the pass from Miller to Ordle. They also hook up on the play of the game. Miller the lob to Ordle here. Watch this catch for the touchdown. Lexington's in the Class 1A semifinals after a 38-19 win. In college football, Todd Berry has done something nobody at ISU. Part of Illinois' Final Four going after round four of the playoffs this weekend. We've got highlights and post game from all four games coming up in the next 25 minutes. Hello, Heart of Illinois, and welcome to HOI Sports Rewind. We do have highlights of all four of our big playoff games from this weekend, including three games in 4A. Yeah, three of the Elite Eight in Class 4A from the Heart of Illinois. We'll begin our 4A highlights this afternoon up in Rochelle, and Tanny and the Lexington Minutemen have had. And today, maybe a little bit of revenge on Lexington's mind. Lexington hosting North Boone, the team that knocked them out of the playoffs a year ago. The boys in purple came ready to play. They literally come flying on the field for this game. Lexington sky high, and they took advantage of that emotion as they took it right down the field. Robbie Cavallo with a nice run up the middle. Then quarterback Nate Miller to Ben Miller. What a great game Ben Miller played with Wes Sedgwick and a couple other players hurt. Ben stepped up big. Robert Kledermas hurt as well. <laughs> Never have been able to say his name, but he's a great player. He was out of this game as well. Then it's Nate Miller, Justin Ordle. The nice timing pattern for a good gain right there by Lexington. Then it's Miller, the touchdown pass. He's going up top to Casey Kettleson.
for the score. Beautiful fade pattern to Kettleson. Seven zip Lexington at that point. And then a little bit of defense by Lexington. Justin Ordle will hit the quarterback from North Boone as he pitches the ball. Lexington has not recovered the fumble, but this is a 12-yard loss as Lexington's speedy defense all over the field. The boys in purple were everywhere. Then Justin Ordle, what a game Ordle had. He's all over these highlights. Justin Ordle with the interception right here for Lexington. The pick by Justin. Back on offense, here come the Minutemen. Robbie Cavallo told us, on, told us on the news last night he did not have a good game last year versus North Boone. Well, he got some revenge today. Cavallo played great. The offensive line played great. Nice run by Robbie outside. Next play, Nate Miller. Touchdown pass to Justin Ordle. Nate Miller had a super game. We saw a few of these. The fade patterns earlier to Kettleson. This time to Ordle for the touchdown. Bam, Lexington's right on top. Two-touchdown lead on North Boone. Defense, Philip McArdle is going to come up on the highlight coming up here as he stuffs the ball carrier. McArdle right there, number 71. Great play and a whole lot of minute men in on the tackle. But North Boone was not going to go away. Trailing 13 zip, their quarterback, Wes Porras. The nice run outside for the score. Suddenly it's 13 7. And you had to wonder North Boone, a winner over Lexington last year, could they do it again? Well, Lexington defense comes up big, fourth and short. They stop. North Boone, Lexington takes over, and here they come again. The Minutemen now in the second quarter. Robbie Cavallo off the pitch by Nate Miller gets to the outside for good yards. Then it's Robbie Cavallo again with a nice gain. Lexington pretty much doing what they wanted. We've seen some nice pass plays. We've seen a whole lot of this. Cavallo, the nice run. Beautiful run right there by Robbie. And then it's Nate Miller, the pass over the middle to Phillip Brown. I listened to the game today, and... WJEZ Radio, and they said, look out for Phillip Brown. They knew what they were talking about. Brown had a big game, picks up some big yards right here over the middle. Then Nathan Barnard running hard for the touchdown. Watch Barnard take it in for the score. And let's give some credit to the guys up front. How about Jared Wagner, number 61, and Ryan Homan, number 73. Let's watch the play again. Watch the center, number 61, Jared Wagner. He seals one side with some great blocking. Ryan Homan, 73 right there, seals the other side. Wagner and Homan escort Bernard to the end zone. Great blocking by the Minutemen. Later, more great blocking. Robbie Cavallo, the nice run right here. But let's give credit to T.J. Heinzman. He's quick off the football. Watch Heinzman, the right tackle on the play, the way Cavallo's running. Heinzman makes the nice tackle. Then watch Cavallo right there as Heinzman seals the outside. Cavallo's got those eyes looking ahead. That's how he makes all those great cutbacks. Beautiful highlight right there by Heinzman and Cavallo. Sets up the touchdown pass. The fade. Nate Miller, Casey Kettleson. Three fade touchdown passes in the first half. The Minutemen having some fun. The fun would continue in the second half for Lexington because here come the Minutemen. Don Tanney's boys are coming again. Watch Nate Miller the pass to Casey Kettleson. And these guys aren't just small and fast. They're tough. Kettleson runs right over the defender for North Boone. Then it's Miller rolling out and finding Phillip Brown. The guys on the radio told us, keep an ear, keep an eye on Brown. Well, North Bo Boone did not keep an ear on him. Brown had a big day. Nice catch right there. That sets up the field goal, a short field goal by Nate Miller. 31-7 Lexington at that point. Next play from scrimmage. North Boone's going to score a touchdown. Let's give North Boone credit. They beat Chinoa, they beat El Paso, but they could not pull off the mid-state trifecta because Lexington knocked them off today. Defense now, Justin Ordle. Ordle comes up with the interception right here. But guess what? This interception is going to be called back by a defensive holding. So no interception for Ordle. Don Tanny not too sure about that call. But Justin Ordle, he said, Coach, don't worry. Very next play. This one will count. Ordle with another interception. Number 20's everywhere. Lexington's got the ball. Here comes a touchdown. Here comes Nate Miller to that secret weapon. Phillip Brown, what a night for Nate Miller. Kick the field goal, four touchdown passes. Are you kidding me? Lexington a winner. Don Tanney and the boys had a lot to celebrate. Let's hear Don Tanney talking to the Minutemen after the game. Congratulations on the win. Outstanding effort. Outstanding game. Now. Now, 542 teams start the season. Right now, there's 24 left playing, and we're one of them. Congratulations. Okay, outstanding effort by everybody on the field. 
today was really a team win. We had a couple guys that didn't play today because of illness and because of injury. Ben Milley did a great job. Great, great team win. I'm really proud of the way you played. We'll get back to work on Tuesday. Back to work on Tuesday, nothing on Monday. Uh, uh, we've got um, uh, Newman here. It'll be a home game. We had some big uh, plays on defense. We got a couple turnovers, and it kind of ch changed momentum. And, I mean, we got, like I said, we got playmakers, and just got to get the ball in their hands. Casey and Ort and Robbie and those guys are great. I've enjoyed playing with them for four years, and I hope I can play with them two more games. All the seniors are getting more experience and just coming together a little bit more each year, and just everything seems to click. Let's talk about next week. What do you guys think is going into the next round? you got a home game, I know. Yeah, I mean, that's all we know pretty much right now. So we've got a home game. We're just going to enjoy this game and take. You know, we'll go back to work on Tuesday. Enjoy Monday off. We'll have the HOI camera there Tuesday for some interviews at that practice. That wraps up our highlights of the HOI Final Four. But before we wrap up this edition of HOI Sports Rewind, let's rewind the best plays of this fabulous football weekend. Here's WOW. Congratulate Canton, Metamore, and Pontiac. Three great teams, three great coaches. Been a pleasure working with them. Good luck, Minutemen. The highlights are short and sweet in this one. Eric Delaney rolls out, hits his favorite target. All-stater P.J. Fleck in the end zone as the Knights move one step closer to repeating his champion. Kaneland wins it 21-6. Next week, they visit Spring Valley Hall. On the Class 2A, Rockridge versus Paxton Buckley Loda. Rockridge won the Class 2A title in 1994, and here they're playing some mean defense. They go on to win this one. Next week, they host Stillman Valley. We promised you highlights from Class 6A to 1A, and we didn't lie. Three-time 1A runner-up. Lexington versus North Boone. Now these two teams met last year in the playoffs with North Boone winning 34 to 14. It only took two minutes to see who was controlling this one. Lexington's Nate Miller lost the ball into the hands of Casey Kettleson. But Miller has more. He follows that throw with another bomb to Justin Ertel. And it was a quick two touchdown lead for the Minutemen. The Vikings did make a run though. Kevin Lucien busts through the line and down the field to put the Vikes on the board. Unfortunately, that was it for the Vikes. Lexington had a lot more for them. Miller comes right back with another pass, this time to Phillip Brown. And Brown takes it in and does his own version of the Lambeau leap. Not perfect, but the fans love it. Your final, 38 to 19 Lexington. Next week, they host Sterling Newman. All right, time now for our Dynamics Play of the Week. And it comes from the Bowling Brook Rock Island game. We pick it up, no score in the third quarter. We take you to a defensive battle in Class 5A, Bowling Brook and Rock Island. And Adam Wyman's boot gives Bowling Brook the three zip lead, and it would stand. The Raiders come away with the win, and that's our Dynamics Play of the Week. Well, that's good play. The fade pass pattern. It's a play Lexington has used all season for touchdowns. You know, Nate Miller puts the ball right where it needs to be, and 
and uh, we've got two kids out there on the perimeter and Ordle and Kettleson that can go get the ball and, and beat people one-on-one. -on -one. Nate just puts it up in the air and you just have to run underneath it. It's not too difficult of a route, just get going and just hopefully deep and catch a touchdown. The simple fade pattern has worked all year for Lexington. It seems every Friday or Saturday we show you a touchdown off the fade pattern. It's worked all fall, but what makes the fade pattern work is a lot of practice during the summer. I mean, it starts during the summer I'm in camps and, and all that, but I'm, we run every day. We always run fade patterns. And How many times do you think you've caught that pass in practice or in games? Uh, a bunch. Um, we Four years, over four years. You run it so many times that you just, me and Nate, kind of have a feeling that he puts it in the same spot every time and I run the same route every time. It's a simple play, but if executed properly, it's an unstoppable play. The fade, a play that has Lexington's opponents fading away and the Minutemen just 48 minutes from a state championship game. From a great football story to our Jim Dandy football story, what an ugly scene at the end of last night's football game. Derek Thomas showing off the... ...are winning with big plays on offense and big plays on defense. Leading the way last Saturday, senior Justin Ordle. He caught a big touchdown pass and also picked off two passes. I was fortunate enough to come up with a couple big interceptions and uh, had one really good touchdown catch. I think everyone on the team's made a couple of big plays. Well, we've had a lot of success with all of our, our passes. The passing game has really been effective all year. Justin wins our HOI Athlete of the Week for big plays on offense and defense. So what does this Minutemen prefer? Scoring a big touchdown or delivering a big hit? I like defense a little bit better than offense. I, I like hitting people. A big play weapon on offense and defense. Justin Ordle, our HOI Athlete of the Week. The high school swim finals are this weekend, and Peoria Richwood sends an experienced and is on to the state championship game. All we have to do is, is find a way to beat Newman, and uh, it doesn't have to be a, a pretty football game. We don't have to win by a lot. Uh, we just got to find a way. It's pretty exciting, and it's tough to stay focused, but we all realize that we're still one step away, and if we don't find a way to beat uh, Sterling Newman, then, then we won't be there. Coach Moe and Coach Tanny would agree. Mm -hmm. Just win. <laughs> No matter how you do it. That's right. Just <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Just ahead, some celebrities. Georgette, 99's for less than the 98. You're kidding, right? Uh-uh. Call it. Thanks, Kurt. Hello, Heart of Illinois, the final Heart of Illinois football team, the Lexington Minutemen, today playing in the state semifinals. Lexington hosting Sterling Newman this afternoon. The Minutemen trailed 7-zip when they put together this scoring drive in the second quarter. Quarterback Nate Miller to Casey Kettleson with a nice gain. Later on, Miller hits Robbie Cavallo on the screen, and Cavallo finds the end zone. That tied the game at seven apiece. Then in the fourth quarter, Lexington trailed 13 to seven, but watch this crazy play. Newman fumbles on the reverse, then follow the bouncing ball. Josh Martin eventually falls on the ball in the end zone. It was 14-13 Minutemen, but Lexington led for just two plays. Two plays later, Andrew Popicia breaks the long touchdown run. 21-14, the Comets and Lexington's great playoff run. You know, our kids laid it on the line. They played as hard as they could play for 48 minutes, and they've done that week in, week out. And I'm just really proud of the way our kids have played. Played them tough. They're real physical, hit real hard. I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Congratulations to the Minutemen on a great season. All the Lexington highlights tonight on Football Rewind at 12.35. Tonight, other semi- For a touchdown, it's 14-13 Minutemen. Moments later, Paposi makes amends in a big way. He goes 60 yards for the score, for the winning score. And Lexington is eliminated 21-14 in the semifinals. Well, I'm kind of disappointed. I thought we were... Well, I think we could have been the state champions, uh, but I guess it just wasn't meant to be. No one expected you guys to be playing football on November 21st. Nobody. You got a coaching staff that could not be more proud of you. You got families that could not be more proud of you. And you got a community that could not be more proud of you. Yeah. D, terrific again. Eric Robertson, the steal, just to get to the state finals. 
Lexington. A win over Sterling Newman today puts the Minutemen in the Class 1A championship game next Friday. Now, four years ago, the Minutemen lost to Newman in the state title game, so they had a little revenge on their mind. Four years later, they're playing today. Newman strikes first. Second quarter, Brian Demmer throws the 10-yard touchdown pass to Andrew Poposhia. 7-0 in favor of the Comets. Later in the half, Lexington with Connor. Nate Miller connects with Robbie Cavallo. Look at the one-handed catch. He gets in. That ties the game 7-7. That's the way it was at halftime. But in the second half, Newman's size and strength just wears out the Minutemen. It's Poposhi again darting near the near sidelines, and he is gone. Sterling Newman, a 21-14 winner. They're heading to the Class 1A championship game. We've had seniors that have just busted their rear end for four years now, and I couldn't be more proud of those kids. And, uh, you know, they, they've got a lot to be proud of. They've accomplished a great deal. And, and, and again, no one's expected us to be playing football on November 21st. So uh, my hat's off to our kids. The Minutemen finish a great season, 11-2, one win shy of the state title game. At the state swim meet outside Chicago, quite a day for All right, so everything for you. But our top story, the Lexington Minutemen, they are one win away from a Trip to the state finals. We'll tell you how they did in their semifinal game today versus Sterling Newman. That's coming up in sports. Stay with us. Of Illinois sports with Jerry Warfield. Hello, Heart of Illinois. High school football season is over in the Heart of Illinois. Today, the final area team left. The Lexington Minutemen hosting Sterling Newman today. The Minutemen trailed 7-zip when they put together this scoring drive in the second quarter. Quarterback Nate Miller to Casey Kettleson for the nice gainer. Later, Miller hits Robbie Cavallo on the screen. Cavallo then stretches the ball across the goal line for the touchdown. That tied the game at seven apiece. Then in the fourth quarter, Lexington trailed 13-7 when this crazy play happened. Newman fumbles the ball in the reverse. Follow the bouncing ball. Eventually, Josh Martin falls on it in the end zone. 14-13 minute man. Sports local high school athletics as proud sponsors of the HOI Sports Rewind. Fire up the VCR. Have another cup of coffee. Stop counting sheep. It's the middle of the night, so it must be time for HOI Sports Rewind with Jim Matson. Tonight it's not HOI Sports Rewind or even Football Rewind. Tonight it's Lexington Rewind. We've got all the highlights from today's big semifinal game. In fact, we've taken a football rewind on the road to Lexington for today's semifinal clash between Sterling Newman and the Lexington Minutemen. They met four years ago for the state championship. Today they meet with the winner going to the state finals. Let's check out the highlights. To the turf, the winner of today's game does go to the Astro Turf of Hancock Stadium. A little bit of the sound before today's big game is Jared Wagner, the first run through, the run through. Here come the rest of the Minutemen, a little pregame talk to set the scene. Don't panic, just keep doing what we do. Let's go, seniors. The sucker's in your hands right now, seniors. Right here. Go, 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 go. Good start now. Let's go, seniors. Keep on three. One, two, three. Let's go. The Minutemen would receive the ball first, and they'd put together a driver right off the bat. Quarterback Nate Miller to Justin Ordo, our HOI Athlete of the Week, picking up good yards. Then it's Nate Miller to the secret playoff weapon. This guy's come up huge in the playoffs. Phillip Brown makes the catch. Nice toss by Miller. First down, Minutemen. Then up the middle, Lexington going to run the ball. It was hard to run on Newman. They've got a great defensive team year in, year out. Their defense was awfully good again today. But Wes Sedgwick runs hard for about three or four here. Then a bit of controversy early on. Nate Miller picks up five. I actually thought he had the first down on this run, but they mark him just short, never even measured. Then on fourth down, Miller stuffed again, and again, they don't even measure. They just give the ball to Newman. Coach Don Tanny can hardly believe they didn't get a measurement at least, let alone the first down mark. But it's first down going the other way for Sterling Newman. The Lexington defense, terrific all day. Phillip Brown and Nathan Barnard make the tackle right here. Then it's Casey Kettleson coming up big in the defense again. Kettleson the big hit, forcing a fourth down. 
Lexington failed on their fourth down. Newman would fail on their fourth down. Big defensive play by Lexington right here. As the defense comes up big, leading the charge, Nate Miller. The great tackle right there by Miller. So both teams fail on their first possession. Both defenses come up big on fourth down. Now back on offense, the Minutemen again. Robbie Cavallo is going to run hard for about a six-yard gain. But the first quarter ended with all pretty silent. It was 0-0 zero, zero at the end of one. The defense is dominating. Both teams had good drives, but both teams came up short on fourth down. We head to the second quarter again. More defense. Casey Kettleson, Justin Ordle. Great defensive play right there to stuff the run. Fourth and four. This would be one of many big fourth down plays in the game. We've already shown you two, but here on fourth and four, Sterling able to convert. Andy Schneider, a great quarterback rush, but Brian Demmer able to get the pass away to Andrew Faposia for the touchdown. On fourth and four, Newman converts. They score first, and they're gonna add the extra point, and Newman has a seven zip lead. The Minutemen now have the wind at their back here in the second quarter, and they go to work offensively running the ball, though. Robbie Cavallo with a nice gain running left right here. Phillip Brown leading the escort. Cavallo gets pretty good yards to the outside. Then it's Robbie Cavallo again. Lexington did not catch any breaks in the officials in the first half. We already showed you the questionable fourth down ruling. Well, they didn't even measure. Well, here's another questionable call. Nate Miller's pass to Justin Ordle is ruled a fumble. Now watch carefully. Miller's pass to Ordle. It's a very close call. Newman recovers the ball. Now Lexington cannot believe that it was ruled a completed pass and a fumble. They thought it should be incomplete. Watch it again. It's very, very close. Ordle makes the catch, but did he hit the ground before he fumbled? Well, it was a tough call that went against Lexington. Down seven zip, though, the Lexington defense comes up big. Newman could have been driving for a score, but instead, right there, Nathan Miller and Wes Sedgwick on defense. It's now fourth down again, and this time they'll stop the option. Fourth and seven, Lexington's defense comes up big. They stretch the play out. Josh Martin makes the tackle. It's first down going the other way. Now a beautiful drive. We'll show you every play in the drive. On first down, they trade the fade pattern to Justin Ordle just out of his reach. But boy, it was a great drive for quarterback Nate Miller in the game. Very next play, it's now second and 10. Miller to Casey Kettleson for a first down. It was a brilliant drive by Lexington. Trailing 7-zip, they put together this beautiful drive. Third play of the drive, Miller's going to hook up with Phillip Brown. Play action, Miller rolls to his right, takes his time, finds Brown, first down Lexington. Fourth straight pass play on the drive. This time it's going to be Nathan Miller to Justin Ordle. Another nice pickup for the Minutemen. Then Robbie Cavallo running hard. They mix in a running play right here, and Cavallo's going to pick up about six or seven yards. And that even had the fans in the uh, pickup truck cheering on the Minutemen. A huge crowd on hand. It's first down, Minutemen. Here they come. And then it's quarterback Nathan Miller. He's going to tuck this one under as he goes back to pass. Instead of passing, he keeps it himself, picks up good yards. Then Miller's going to hook up on a beautiful pass play to Casey Kettleson. Just a gorgeous pass right here. Pick up of about 20, puts the ball inside, right at about the 10-yard line. First down for the Minutemen from there, and here come the Minutemen fans. Here come the Minutemen. Great drive they got going here. Nate Miller's made all the plays in the drive, and here he doesn't have a chance to make a play. So he does the intelligent thing. He throws the ball away. What a great four-year starting quarterback Nate Miller's been. Then on second down, they're going to give the ball to Robbie Cavallo running left. Cavallo's going to pick up just a couple of yards, forcing a very difficult third and seven. But boy, did they convert on third and seven. Watch Cavallo on the screen pass. Makes the one-handed catch and then reaches those hands over the goal line for the touchdown. Minutemen crowd going crazy. Why not? A beautiful drive by Lexington. 
a 10-play drive, marching it right down the field and tying the ball game when Nathan Miller knocks home the extra point. This game was tied 7-7 with a buck 50 to go in the half. The Minutemen weren't done yet because the defense would get the ball back for the offense. Josh Martin was all over the football field, fights off the tackle, fights off the block to make the tackle. Then Wes Sedgwick on third down will make another great open field tackle, forcing the fourth down. Sedgwick, number 22, with a great shoe screen tackle right there. It's Minutemen taking over after the punt. With 48 seconds to go, they take over the ball in their own 42. They try the old hook and lateral. It worked so well late in the first half versus Arcola. Worked okay right here. Nate Miller's going to hook up with Justin Ordle. Pretty good timing. Ordle's going to flip it to Casey Kettleson, but Sterling Newman kind of sniffed out the hook and lateral. Picks up good yards, but did not go for the home run this time. Later, it's Nathan Miller to Justin Ordle. Ordle gets out of bounds. Then Nathan Miller again will hook up with Ordle. Lexington's putting together a final minute drive. Miller, Ordle, first down. That was third and one. They're able to pick up the first down. Now they send out Kettleson to the right. They're looking for that fade pattern, but the ball just overthrown right here. Then in the final seconds of the half, 14.9 seconds to go. They're going to get the pass to Ordle, but you got to give Sterling Newman credit. They were a hard-hitting defensive team. This is the biggest hit of the game. Bam! Knocks the ball loose. And Lexington has to settle for a 7-7 tie at halftime, but that's pretty good to settle for a 7-7 tie after trailing 7 to zip, and after that controversial fumble, it could have been worse. Instead, it's 7-7 at the half, and hey, we love Jim and Dave. Our Dave La Rochelle getting a little credit with the sign makers up there in Lexington. It's okay, second half, here we go, let's get fired up. Once or worse, don't let up. Uh, no, baby, go so some some play some pride. Hard nose football, perfect. Go. Hard eyes, 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 go. Lexington's goal was to set the tempo, with Sterling Newman telling their team the same thing. They put together a drive to start the second half. Justin Ordle, Nate Miller, Nathan Bernard make the tackle right here for the Minutemen. But on fourth and eight, we talked about those big fourth down plays in the game. Fourth and eight, Newman on the drive. They're at the 23-yard line. Quarterback Brian Demmer is going to come up with a big play. Josh Martin's trying to fire up his boys. But Lexington, come, or excuse me, Sterling Newman comes up with a big play. Quarterback Demmer's going to find Darren Bellini for a big, big first down. There were a couple of huge plays in the touchdown drives for Newman. They both came on fourth down. There's Bellini, takes it inside the right about the five yard line. First and goal from there. A couple of plays later, the fullback would dive in on the fullback plunge. Touchdown, Newman, a very impressive drive to start the second half. Lexington though will catch a little bit of a break because the extra point is no good. So it's 13 to seven, still a great drive by Newman. Not only do they score points, but they took seven minutes off the clock, seven minutes when Lexington would have had the wind at their back. Robbie Cavallo, great run right here to start things. Great block by Corey Leak. He's given up 55 pounds to the guy he's blocking, but Leak does the job. Next play, Leak, Josh Martin, and Ryan Holman. Great blocking by Leak, Martin, and Holman, and Cavallo picks up more yards. Lexington's on the drive, going maybe for a tying score or go-ahead score down by just six. Third and three, Nate Miller rolls out, gets the first down, but again, the big hit by Newman. Causes the fumble, and Newman takes over. A little bit depressed at the end of the third quarter, but that would not last long because the very first play of the fourth quarter, the Minutemen fumble, then Newman fumbles. In fact, I believe everybody on the football field will fumble on this play. Newman tries the reverse, and look at who's got the football. They fumble it at the 30-yard line. It goes to the 20, now to the 10, and still fumbling the football. 
finally Josh Martin winds up with the pigskin in the end zone and Celebration City and Lexington, the Minutemen, score the wild fumble touchdown to tie the game. The excitement will continue because Nathan Miller makes the extra point. And Lexington has the lead with 11 minutes and 37 seconds to go in the game. The Minutemen are all fired up. They're ahead 14-13. The crowd's fired up. But the excitement would not last for long. Second play after the kickoff. Andrew Paposio is gone down the right sideline. Breaks a couple of tackles. Couple of Minutemen slip. Andrew Paposio does not slip. He takes it all the way for the touchdown. Huge play for Newman. Lexington had the momentum, but two plays after the wild fumble. Newman's into the end zone. They then go for the two-point conversion. They convert. It's now 21 to 14. After a couple of punts, Lexington takes over late in the fourth quarter, and they get a drive going. Quarterback Nate Miller here on the quarterback draw picks up good yards. Then Miller's going to hook up with Casey Kettleson. How many times have we said Miller to Kettleson, Miller to Ordle, Robbie Cavallo the run? The great senior captains of this team would make a final run down the field here. Miller to Kettleson, then Miller to Ordle. Great catch by Justin Ordle right here. Sets up a fourth and one. Fourth and one with the season on the line. And Lexington would convert. Robbie Cavallo, first watch Nate Miller try to draw the defense offsides with the bark here. They don't jump. But Robbie Cavallo able to get just enough of a jump to pick up the first down. But moments later, it's now fourth and eight with a minute 30 to go in the game. Nate Miller is going to do everything he can on this play, looking downfield. But the Sterling Newman team gets a good pass rush. Miller sacked. Lexington forced to give up the ball on downs. Give credit to the Lexington defense because they came up big. They forced the punt. They try their darndest to block the punt. But not only does Newman get off the punt, it's a terrific punt. Pinning Lexington deep. This would be the final play of Lexington's terrific season. Miller's desperation heave is heave no. Lexington's season comes to an end. Newman goes to the state championship. Lots of post game from the end of a great, great dream season for the Lexington Minutemen. All right. We've got 31 guys here. We've got 31 guys that have committed themselves to being a good football team. And you've worked, and you've worked, and you've worked. And you've gotten better, and better, and better. No one expected you guys to be playing football on November 21st. Nobody. You got a coaching staff that could not be more proud of you. You got families that could not be more proud of you. And you got a community that could not be more proud of you. Yeah. So when you walk off the field today, gentlemen, walk off the football field with your heads up, with your heads high, because you deserve it. Hang up. Our kids laid it on the line. They played as hard as they could play for 48 minutes, and they've done that week in, week out. And I'm just really proud of the way our kids have played. Yeah, we overheard your, your final talk to the boys. And I mean, what a year they had. A uh, senior class that really battled for you every Friday night and every Saturday in the playoffs. Those kids have really paid the price for four years, not just one year, for four years. And I couldn't be more proud of them. Uh, you know, it's nice to see the payoff when you put in that kind of effort, and that kind of time, and that kind of sweat to see it pay off. And it, it has paid off for them. I'm really pleased for them. I know uh, the, the four kids, is, uh, the four senior captains, it's tough to say goodbye to those four guys, four absolute uh, guys who represented Lexington in the best possible way. Yeah, some of the, without a doubt, some of the be best players that have ever played here. You know, Nathan Miller, you're not going to replace a Nathan Miller. And, uh, and Ordle and Kettleson and Cavallo, those guys have had great, great careers. And uh, they just, they've got a lot to be proud of. And beyond those four, I mean, he had linemen that worked their tail off. I mean, you have to be so proud. Guys like T.J. Heinzman uh, and Robert Kledermas, guys that played very, very little varsity football coming into this year, and they stepped up, and they just made great plays all year long. And I'm just, again, my hat's off to our kids.
If you can summarize 1998, uh, 10 years from now, how are you going to remember this bunch? Oh, you know, you always remember the great players. And uh, we had a lot of great players, kids that made plays for us. And uh, it's a football team I'll never forget. Those are the words of Coach Don Tanning after tonight's game. Now we're going to talk to the four senior captains of this team. We're going to begin over here with Casey Kettleson, Justin Ordle right here, Nate Miller, and Robbie Cavallo. I'm going to begin with Casey. And Casey, I know it's obviously a tough feeling moments after your great high school career ends, but tell me a little of the emotions right now. Uh, I'm, I feel really bad because uh, this is what we work for all year. And uh, when it's over, it's just no words to describe it because it's just like our heart being tore out of your chest. But and as tough as it is, I mean, you guys played so hard, you have to be proud of that. We played with them, and we knew we could play with anybody. We could play with anybody, but we just didn't execute on some plays, and uh, they out physical us, and uh, we just came up short. Justin Ordle here. Justin had a great senior season as well. Tell me a little bit about your emotions now. I know this has got to be uh, gut-wrenchingly tough. Yeah, it's a big letdown for the entire team, but we played hard, played our hearts out, and we just had a couple of turnovers, and the game just didn't end up going our way. You have so many memories. I'm sure playing with these three guys and playing with the whole team, I mean, you're going to take away a lot of memories. Yeah, I love this team. It's from the Nate, Robbie, and Casey, I love all of them. It's just been an ex a tremendous experience to play with each and every one of them. All right, I'm going to turn over here to uh, Nate Miller. And I, you know, I, <laughs> Nate, I'll never forget your freshman year. I saw you play against DMAC. And DMAC was a lot like you guys. They were a senior-dominated team then, and they, they kind of beat the heck out of you. They were a physical, strong team. Well, for four years, you guys got better. I know that's what Coach said to you, and you have to be proud of your four-year career. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed playing with these guys, and it's unfortunate that we can't play one more game together, but we'll take away a lot of good memories with this, and it was a lot of fun, and it was just I couldn't have a disappointed now, but I'm sure we'll look back on it and be one of the better things that we've done in our lives. I mean, you played with a bunch of your friends. Uh, you probably never uh, never realized how important that is until late in your life, but it's been a great four-year run. Yeah, I mean, like we said, I mean, we love each other, and we're real close. We, we hang out with each other all the time, and, I mean, we probably might not see each other too much after after this year, and we'll look back on this and just look how much fun we had. And Robbie could all over here. Robbie scored that first touchdown on a great effort. And let me ask you about the game, first of all. It was a great effort. You guys really battled with a, a team that's a perennial powerhouse. Yeah, we play them tough, and I thought we could beat them. I still think we could beat them, but I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Lexington football is all about putting it on the line, and, and you did that. I mean, you have to be proud of the effort even in losing today. Yeah, we played them tough. They were real physical, hit them real hard. And just, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. I want to shake all your hands. You guys have been a pleasure to cover for the last four years. Uh, a terrific season. As we wrap up Football Rewind, we take a look back at the best plays of tonight. Here's a look back at WOW. Congratulations to all the Minutemen coaches and players. It's been a fabulous run. Number one. Wow. Wow. Wow.